will be presenting and analyzing the speech John F. Kennedy gave in West Berlin on June 26, 1963, Ich bin ein Berliner. When Kennedy spoke on the steps of West Berlin City Hall, he placed West Berlin as a city upon a hill for the world of freedom and cemented the claim all of Berlin had to belong to the free world. To better understand the impacts of this powerful speech, I will first explain the significant context the address was given in. Then I will move to explore Kennedy's goal in his choice of diction and rhetorical devices, and finally provide the several substantial impacts this speech had around the world. 1963 was a tumultuous period for the Cold War and a delicate time in the city of Berlin. The Berlin Wall went up a year prior, establishing a tense environment and an iron divide within the city of Berlin. Shortly thereafter, Peter Klot Kahn was shot and killed trying to escape into West Berlin. However, this tragedy did not deter nearly 5,000 other people who tried to escape, too often with the same consequence as Klot Kahn. The Kennedy administration was marked with an appeasement-styled approach to the Soviet Union. Just a few weeks before Ich bin ein Berliner, Kennedy gave a series of addresses that took a reconciliatory tone as he set goals to improve relations with the USSR and engage in negotiations. The original intent of the speech was to raise the morale of West Berliners and set up a peaceable agenda for the gradual reunion of Berlin as an open city without stepping on the feet of Khrushchev. What became of Kennedy's speech on June 26, 1963 reset the tone and manner in the United States in which the United States dealt with the city of Berlin and, to a limited extent, the USSR, as you will now see as I present and analyze Ich bin ein Berliner. <sighs> I am proud to come to this city as the guest of your distinguished mayor, who has symbolized throughout the world the fighting spirit of West Berlin. And I am proud, and I am proud to visit the federal public with your distinguished chancellor, who for so many years has committed Germany to democracy and freedom and progress, and to come here in the company of my fellow American, General Clay, who, who has come to this city during its greatest moments of crisis and will come again if ever needed. Kennedy immediately begins to build a bridge of respect and understanding with the West Berliners. He calls himself a guest of two distinguished Germans, setting them above himself, and he brings up General Clay, a symbol of good faith providing a tangible example of the trust between West Berlin and the United States. 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, the proudest boast was Kiwis Romanus Sum. Today, in the world of freedom, the proudest boast is Ich bin ein Berliner. Kennedy hyperbolizes the the pride Berliners should have by comparing the glory of Berliners to that of the citizens of Rome. His use of repetition and parallelism emphasize his comparison, providing a larger impact to what is being said. There are many people in the world who don't understand, or say they don't, what is the great issue between the free world and the communist world. Let them come to Berlin. There are some who say, there are some who say that communism is the wave of the future. Let them come to Berlin. And there are some who say, in Europe and elsewhere, we can work with the communists. Let them come to Berlin. And there are even a few who say that it is true that communism is an evil system, but it permits us to make economic progress. La Sinach Berlin Komen. Let them come to Berlin. Kennedy strengthens his bond to West Berliners in stating, let them, as if those that don't understand should come and they will understand. We are here, and they are there, and only you know the trials and tribulations of this life. La Sinach Berlin Komen epitomizes this perspective and cements it with the audience through the German language. Freedom has many difficulties, and democracy is not perfect but we have never had to put a wall up to keep our people in, to prevent them from leaving us. I want to say on behalf of my countrymen, who live many miles on the other, away on the other side of the Atlantic, who are far distant from you, that they take the greatest pride, that they have been able to share with you, even from a distance, the story of the last 18 years. I know of no town, no city, that has been besieged for 18 years, 
that still lives with the vitality and the force and the hope and the determination of the city of West Berlin. Kennedy again hits on the bond between Americans and the citizens of Berlin. His repeated use of and rather than a comma gives way to each trait he mentions rather than just providing a list of merit. While the wall is the most obvious and vivid demonstration of the failures of the communist system for all the world to see, we take no satisfaction in it, for it is, as your mayor has said, an offense not only against history, but an offense against humanity, separating families, dividing husbands and wives and brothers and sisters, and dividing a people who wish to be joined together. He taps into the emotional issue of the wall that divides the people of Berlin, incorporating the suffering that the people have had to endure, thus building a strong appeal to pathos. What is... What is true of this city is true of Germany. Real, lasting peace in Europe can never be assured as long as one German out of four is denied the elementary right of free men, and that is to make a free choice. In 18 years of peace and good faith, this generation of Germans has earned the right to be free, including the right to unite their families and their nation in lasting peace with goodwill to all people. Once again, building upon the appeal to the reunion of a people, Kennedy begins to move from the city to Germany to all of Europe and beyond, setting West Berlin as a model for the world and establishing his vision for the future. You live in a defended island of freedom, but your life is part of the main. So let me ask you, as I close, to lift your eyes beyond the dangers of today to the hopes of tomorrow, beyond the freedom merely of the city of Berlin or your country of Germany, to the advance of freedom everywhere, beyond the wall, to the day of peace with justice, beyond yourselves and ourselves, to all mankind. Kennedy now extends his comparison to the world, not only making Berlin's struggle a universal one, but praising the city as a symbol for freedom. He has each member of the audience look to the future, to the day of peace to be reached with the union of the city, thus immortalizing the struggle of the people of Berlin. Freedom is indivisible, and when one man is enslaved, all are not free. When all are free, then we look, can look forward to the day when this city will be joined as one, and this country and this great continent of Europe in a peaceful and hopeful globe. When that day finally comes, as it will, the people of West Berlin can take sober satisfaction in the fact that they were in the front lines for almost two decades. When John F. Kennedy, as a president of a nation that once accepted slavery, speaks of freedom as indivisible, he creates an intense ethos by defining freedom as an individual's and a peaceful people's right. He then moves back to his vision of the future with determination shown in three words, as it will, showing his faith in the people of Berlin and his country's own resolve. All, all free men, wherever they may live, are citizens of Berlin, and, therefore, as a free man, I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Berliner. Kenny ends with a brilliant finale, making West Berliners the essence of freedom, ending with his famous one-liner and walking off the stage without another word. Kenny's speech on June 26 changed the direction of U.S. foreign policy, stunning his policy advisors as well as world leaders. Nikita Khrushchev even gave the impression that the speech had been made by an entirely different president. Kennedy demonstrated his unique ability to reshape U.S. foreign policy on a whim in that five-minute speech. His address sent an electric shock through the crowd of a nearly estimated 450,000 people that recharged their will and gave a new face to their struggle. And so, as I close, I ask you to look past our trivial differences and remember, Ich bin ein Berliner, and so are you. Bye. How do I stop this?